So we've spent a bit of time talking about logistic regression and introducing the idea. What we'd like to do now is build up the ideas of where does the logistic regression equation came, um, where does it come from? So I'm gonna go over a bit of an explanation to build our way up there. We're gonna approach it mostly conceptually, um, dealing with a little bit of the mathematics, but there's a few parts where we're gonna just make some jumps and not uh, get too deep into the mathematical side of things. So where we left off was looking at this example where we have an X variable that's numeric, say age, and a Y or outcome that's yes or no type variable, and there we were looking at evidence of coronary heart disease, yes or no. So the scatter plot would look something like this, these black points, and here we calculated the proportion with coronary heart disease within age groups. And we said we want to fit some model to describe this here. Where we previously talked about the problems with fitting a line, but let's just start from there. So first, let's uh, suppose that we just tried using a line. So using something like multiple linear regression. Okay, so ignoring the fact that this is a zero one variable and just fitting a linear regression model to this data. So what that would be doing would be fitting, so p hat, the estimated probability of the outcome or probability of coronary heart disease as a linear function of the x, right? b naught plus b one x. We said that would be fitting a line through here and we talked already about some of the problems with this, right, that the relationship isn't really linear. Usually they take on this sort of S-shaped curve. Also, this can give us predicted probabilities above 100% and predicted probabilities below 0%. So we want to try and address that. So um, I'll just label this as start, I guess. One thing we can start to think about is we want to fit some model, but that's going to take on values between 0 and 1. So a starting point is we can think of modeling the probability of coronary heart disease as an exponential function of x. Right, so this is the exponent, e to the power of b0 plus b1x. Now what's this going to do? This is going to fit something that's always greater or equal to 0. So it's going to fit something like this, right, an exponential shape curve. So this is going to force our estimated probabilities to always stay above zero, but there's still going to be a problem, right? We're still going to get um, probabilities, predicted probabilities that are greater than 100%, and you know, the relationship usually is not an exponential um, shape function. It looks more like this sort of S-shape function. So what we can do, and this is where I'm going to um, I don't want to say skip some mathematics, but cut some corners a bit and say that what we can do, so this is the model we're going to work with, is we said this here, e to the b0 plus b1x, is going to force the predicted probabilities to be greater than zero. And if we put this over 1 plus e to the b0 plus b1x, what that's going to do is force the predicted probabilities to be less than or equal to 1. Okay, so this is the model that we're going to fit. This here gets called a um, logistic function, or it produces a logistic curve. It produces something that's shaped like this, forced to be above 0 and below 1. And I guess. Uh, quick note I'll add to this. This can also be expressed as p hat is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative and then in parentheses b naught plus b1 x. As so you might see it rather than written this way, expressed that way. It's the same expression. Okay, so again this here is the model that we're going to work with, modeling the probability of the outcome as a logistic function of the x's. So again, you can see here, we, um, following this explanation, we're going to look at the data set in R. We're going to fit a model to a set of data and get the estimated values for the intercept and the coefficient for x and, and work with numeric values of the model. 
Um, what I want to say for now is, right, right now looking at the expression of the model, we can get the estimated values for the model. We can sub in values of x, right? So for an age, what is the predicted probability of coronary heart disease? So we can use our model to estimate p hat, right? Or estimate the probability of the outcome. Now what I want to do is take this model, okay, and rework it a little bit. The same model, but I want to change the scale. I want to get the right-hand side to look like a linear function or a linear equation. So it look very similar to what we were working with when uh, we talked about linear regression. So to do that, again, I'm going to remind you of some of the math we need to get there, but I'm going to just remind you of a couple things and cut some corners. The first is a reminder that the odds of some event A occurring are the probability that A occurs divided by 1 minus the probability of A. Right? The odds of some event A happening are the probability A happens divided by the probability A does not happen. Okay, so um, we learned this uh, earlier. Odds and probability are related. They're not the exact same thing. And then one other property I want to remind you of, logs and exponents. The natural logarithm of e to the power of a is a. Right? So the log is the anti-exponent, or the exponent is the anti-log. So we're going to make use of those two properties. What I'm going to do is, starting this model, I'm going to take the odds of both sides. So I'm going to take the odds of this side. So rather than looking at the probability of the disease, I'm going to look at the odds of the disease. P hat over 1 minus P hat. Right, so again, I'm, rather than looking at probabilities, I'm converting this to odds. And again, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, so I'm going to convert this to odds as well. And so I'm going to jump a few um, steps here, but if you were to take the odds of this, it's going to simplify to e to the b naught plus b1x. Okay, so that's some of the, the math that I've jumped a few steps. If you want to, you can spend the time um, working that out yourself. Like I said, our, our focus is much more on the applications of these uh, regression models, not on the, the theory of derivations of them. Okay, so just a reminder, I took the odds of the left-hand side and the odds of the right-hand side. Okay. So P over 1 minus P is the odds of having the disease. Probability of disease divided by probability of not disease. Okay. Now what I'm going to do right, is I want to get rid of this exponent. I'm going to take the natural logarithm, okay, ln, or what I'm just referring to as the log. I'm going to take the log of both sides. So on this side, that's going to be the log of P over 1 minus P. And on this side, if we take the log of the exponent of b0 plus b1x, this just comes down to b0 plus b1x. And again, this is the same model as here. So this is the model. Here, we're looking at the model on the scale of the probability of the outcome, right? What's the probability of coronary heart disease? Here, we're looking at the model on the scale of the log of the odds of the outcome. Good. We can think of logistic regression as modeling the probability of the disease, or when we um, convert it to working on the log odd scale, well, let me step back and say that, something. We can think of modeling the probability of the disease as a logistic function of the x variables, or we can rework it to think of it as we're modeling the log of the odds of the disease as a linear function of the x variables. And again, these are the, the same model expressed on the scale of probabilities or the scale of the log odds. In the following video, we're going to take some data in R, we're going to fit model, we're going to look at the numeric values, we're going to look at the plot of the model on the scale of probabilities versus the scale of log odds. So we're going to work through some of those. I just want to say a few more things before I wrap this up here. The log odds sometimes gets referred to as the logit. 
them. This is what gets called the link function. We're not really going to stick, uh, we're not going to use that term very much in the course, but mathematically what we're doing is we're using the log of the odds of the outcome to link to a linear function. That's why logistic regression gets called a generalized linear model, right? Here's the generalization that went on. Here's what we did to connect it or link to a linear function. So um, what I wanted to say here was, when we think of the model on the scale of the probability of coronary heart disease, it's this here, right? We're fitting this logistic, this S-shaped function, this S-shaped curve through the probabilities. If we were to go and convert these, rather than looking at the probability, okay, rather than looking at the probability of coronary heart disease, if we were to convert those to the log of the odds, so let's put O's here, we can think of that as we're trying to fit a line through the log of the odds of the disease. So again, on the scale of the probability of the disease, it's a logistic shaped curve. On the scale of the log of the odds of the disease, we're fitting a line. And there's going to be a lot of benefits to this. Previously, we learned a lot about linear regression and um, properties of lines, properties of linear models, and so on. And most of what we've learned is going to transfer over to logistic regression. Because you can see here on the right hand side, again, we're working with a linear function, right? Or we're fitting a line. Um, so most of the um, things that we've learned there are going to transfer over. I want to say, I guess, one or two more things before I close this off. Logistic shape functions, they can take on many shapes. They're always confined between 0 and 1, the way we're fitting it here. They can be sort of like we did here, this nice S-shaped curve. It can also go across and much more rapidly increase and flatten out. They can also be decreasing, where they can this and be a very slow decline. Okay, so it's pretty flexible in the shapes it can take on, but it tends to do this upward S or downward S. And I guess one important note, there can be, the segment that we're fitting can actually look very much like a, a straight line, right? It can be doing a curve beyond the um, observed area of the data. And the one final thing I want to say, okay, we won't get into this, this is, fits in much more in a more mathematical um, course about logistic regression, but the way we choose the best fitting line, right, the way we determine the intercept and the slope or the um, coefficients for the other variables in the model is through um, maximum likelihood, right, or nonlinear least squares. So let's not get stuck on that in this course, which is very applied, but I just want to point that out that we do use the same criteria for um, defining the best line and choosing exactly what the intercept and slope should be for our model. So what we'll do is take a look at fitting this model in R, trying to visualize the data um, on the scale of probabilities, the scale of log odds, and then we'll come back to getting the numeric values for the model and working with some model output. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.